introduction the chapters i'll be discussing with uh, with you a few chapters and the chapters primarily deal with courtroom procedural aspects and detail the same from the point of view of an applicants or complainants advocate now why did i choose complainants or applicants advocate is because usually the first generation lawyers re, uh, get the briefs from complainant side like for example you will get a uh, matter of check bounce 138 nia matter and a client will come and say uh, this check of mine has bounced and this was a 50000 1 lakh or whatever be the amount and he comes to you and says get a notice drafted for me or a recovery suit i have this this money i don't have the check but i have the bills with me and file a recovery suit so the first step that will you will be getting is the legal notice which i'll be detailing again after this so what happens is that applicants or complainants advocate the role of applicants and complainants advocate is more important especially for a first generation lawyer because that is the point where a lot of people see fees is the important factor for a client and going to an experience or a settled or an established counsel a client thinks twice when you go for a first generation lawyer you can get a little compromise with the fees factor so the clients take up and bring up the matters for applicant uh, from the applicant side now in an adversarial system a complainants counsel has to tread on the path of prosecution with a lot of caution and preparation as one mistake can give the benefit of doubt to the accused or respond i'll discuss it see i was talking about legal notice now why i emphasize that legal notice should be well drafted and you must master the art as a first generation lawyer how to draft a good legal notice because if you are working on a civil side if you are getting matters of civil side moreover if you are getting matters of recovery nature which involve uh, cheating or which could involve fraud or which could involve criminal breach of trust then you have to draft that notice in a very good way i received my first 10 briefs of uh, 138 nie and recovery so that's why th there i realized the importance of a good legal notice because first impression to client and the opposite party is your legal notice if you have drafted it well then client will feel have a faith that yes my counsel knows he has a good command over language he has a good command over drafting and the opposite party may get a glimpse of the fact that yes we have a good counsel uh, opposite to us legal notice gets you a small amount of fees that is your first fees you you are not going to get a good uh, 50000 or 1 lakh or 2 lakh rupees as your first brief fees so these are the legal notices the small fees that, that that matter a lot so your first fees comes from a legal notice now first opportunity to prove your legal craft and articulation is your legal notice Uh, even during uh, even during your college days you meet a lot of people who will tell you that can you uh, we want to draft and get drafted a legal notice and uh, i'll share my story i have drafted 5 to 10 legal notices during my period of uh, study itself though i the name of the advocate was someone else through which we used to send it but we we used to try this and you you can also try this a lot of students who are into this uh, join who have joined us they can see to this fact that they can draft legal notices legal notices will be your first briefs in a way base of the forthcoming complaint mini draft of the main petition why i say so you you can go anywhere and in every office once a legal notice is drafted half of the job of drafting the main petition is already done we just copy if i tell you the practical experience we just copy the legal notice and then we fit it into the frame and we then accordingly draft it so it is the base of the forthcoming complaint now i'll take a sample topic today and try to explain you what could be uh, the facets or what could be the strategy to excel as a trial court lawyer and what are the points that we must remember now i have taken a sample topic and we'll be dealing other topics as well uh, firstly i'll tell you that let's discuss uh, has the screen been shared are you able to see the ppt everyone yes some popular fields or subjects of yes, law trial court litigation now one could be the check bounce cases uh, just sharing with you 20% of the litigation in indian courts in indian judicial system and pendency is of check bounce cases and why check bounce cases because you can file the same and there's a penal provision attached to it so people and moreover you need not file the stamp duty if you file a recovery civil suit you will have to file a stamp duty so for example for amount of 10 lakh recovery you will have to file a stamp duty in delhi of around uh, 20000 rupees that is the minimum and if, if you go for haryana then it would be 40 to 50000 rupees so clients want to save that that's why they go go for a check bounce case which can be filed on a minor ticket of 2 rupees itself so check bounce cases and even that includes banks and all the organizations as well they never go for recovery suit they always go for check bounce cases so check bounce cases is a very popular and uh, uh, involve a huge pendency number 2 is matrimonial cases around around 30% of the litigation in indian courts is involving matrimonial cases be it 498a case domestic violence case or hma cases in family courts 
so we must we must know and the important aspects of that are available remedies remedies trial and cautions involved a uh, number 3 could be the commercial recovery suits a lot of companies a lot of people go for commercial recovery suits we must remember the fact that after the setting up of commercial courts act under under commercial courts act commercial courts have been set up and after that a lot of people have shown trust into commercial courts and commercial courts are delivering uh, reliefs in a time bound manner so we must know that msct cases they also constitute a huge chunk of the litigation in courts why i am taking these popular fields into consideration is because as a first generation law you will usually get these briefs only as a first briefs so you must know what could be the probable things that you must have in mind and by which you can excel into it msct cases which involve uh, negligent deaths uh, deaths caused by negligence it could be injuries caused by negligence it could be injuries to your cars it could be including insurance claims as well so all those things consumer cases everyone knows it that first briefs of many lawyers are consumer cases we see see consumer cases everywhere happening in and around us so we must know which court to opt for we should go for ncdrc now recently jurisdictions have also pecuniary jurisdiction has been changed so we must know which court to go for we must know and apart from going for a consumer case can we go to some other case for example if it's a property matter we could be going for rera court also we could be going for uh, an criminal complaint against the builder or the uh, or the company or the service provider for uh, an comp- criminal complaint under section 420 406 of the ipc so we must know available remedies the first stepping stone of your client pitch is that you know what are the available remedies because once the client understands that yes my lawyer knows that what are the available remedies he can offer me the best and he will guide me accordingly we fail at times to know the available remedies and during the process of the trial we get to know oh this was also available and then uh, things go bad and number 6 is criminal trial in magisterial courts now the first generation law usually receive magisterial court trials why because sessions trial or other trials could be uh, going for the more experienced ones so criminal trials involving it, it could be 420 it could be 406 it could be 323 ipc simple hurt case it could be a grievous hurt case as well so these would be the common cases that you would be getting